Hello, and welcome to Pinup Pythons. I am Miss Layla, and this is Rebel. So today I want to talk a little bit about snake sheds. So as many of you probably are aware, snakes shed their skin. It's kind of what they're known for. Um, it's one of the things they're known for. Um, snakes, while they do have skin, because there are scaleless snakes out there, um, they have scales that protect their skin. So unlike people and dogs and cats and pretty much all mammals, um, when they grow, they don't stretch. Well, their skin does to a point, but then they can only go so far because they have these lovely scales for protection and to help them move around. They have multiple sets of scales for different things. Um, and they need to basically get some new clothes. So that way their bodies can grow um, without being held back by these scales. So they go through a shed cycle. Shed cycles, so people are always asking me, is there a certain time frame that as often as a, a snake should shed in a year? How many times does a snake shed in a year? Does it take a certain amount? It's, you know, I, I, and it's kind of like people kind of expect things to be consistent across the board. And I understand that that makes things easier, but unfortunately these are animals and it's not always very cut and dry. Snakes shed at different rates basically is the short answer. My baby snakes, they shed more frequently. Why? Well, they're growing quicker. So for example, my little snakes, as they're growing, they'll shed more frequently and um, I'll have a lot more of them. But my big snakes, they don't shed very frequently at all. In fact, my biggest snakes, they go through a shed maybe every three to four months, maybe. And it takes them a little bit longer, especially my Brazilian rainbow boy. It takes him forever to get through a shed for some reason. And there's different stages to shedding. So the first clue we look for is a pink belly. He doesn't have one right now. Um, so it is a little bit difficult. Unfortunately, my snake is in a shed right now. I should not be handling and that is my Brazilian rainbow boa. He is very cranky in a shed. So I do not handle him during a shed, which explains also why I couldn't get him out for my meet my boas video. So first things first is his belly would be very, very pink. And that's our first sign. Then he'll start getting this very hazy appearance to him. He'll, he'll look kind of, he, he won't look his best basically. And they get these blue eyes or they're kind of gray eyes, these zombie eyes with hog noses where they call them zombie eyes because they look like they're just kind of like, their eyes look dead kind of, they're kind of grayish, bluish looking. And what that is, is they, have a buildup of fluid that goes between the scales, the old scales and the new scales. And so what you're seeing, that hazy look, is that buildup of fluid. And it's basically separating the old scales from the new scales. And then what'll happen is they'll kind of darken up, they'll start to clear out a little bit, and then your snake will start to rub on things to start getting their, their skin kind of worked off. They always start from their head, so they'll rub their nose on a lot of stuff. Uh, so when we keep snakes, we typically try to keep some stuff around that's a little bit rougher for them to rub on to go ahead and get that shed off. And then it kind of comes off like a sock. It kind of, kind of like, well, pantyhose maybe is a better stocking. They kind of roll it off of them. Um, if your humidity and everything is great, and there's no massive issues, it should come off all in one piece. Typically how we can tell our husbandry is spot on with a snake is their shed comes off in one complete piece or as, as close to one complete piece because sometimes what happens is they'll be getting things off. I'll give you a great example here. This is from my, my new um, black milk snake and everything's fine, but you can tell there's a part where he, he always does it under things. So you can tell it one part got stuck under something and it ripped off and the other part just kept going. So, oh no, Rebel, he's like, I'm gonna go check this out over here. Sorry. And yeah, so if they're, if they're shedding and they snag on something in their enclosure, it, yeah, it, a shed is not a very tough piece of, 
of anything really, especially for small snakes. So it can get caught on things and rip in half. Does that mean there's something wrong with his husbandry? No, it just means that he was trying to get off his shed underneath this flower pot and the flower pot was too heavy for the shed to just keep going. Some snakes, and this is kind of gross, but some snakes will do their uh, bowel movement during their shed cycle because snakes don't poo very often, realistically. Um, so some snakes will kind of poo in their shed and they kind of got to watch when you take the shed out because sometimes there's a surprise inside the shed. And sometimes you get the shed a day late and it's already dried out and it's gross, but other times you get the shed and it looks really nice. So I have some nice sheds to share with you. Now, I do also want to debunk a massive myth out there. I get this question a lot because as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are times when our friends, the snakes outdoors, come indoors, especially when it's quite cold outside, and they hang out in our houses. Now, for those of us who love snakes and understand them, that's rarely a problem. But for people who are a little bit feared of these animals, it does become quite the issue. And oftentimes, it's not the snake themselves they find, but rather their shed. So I can kind of understand if you're a little afraid of snakes and you found something this size <laughs> in your house all of a sudden you might be a little concerned that something quite large is living in your home with you um so this is where i kind of tell you something about snake sheds that a lot of people aren't aware of because they have to get an old um piece of skin off they kind of have to stretch things out a bit to get out of it so the the this shed is usually quite um, moist. It's it's not dry when it first comes off. It's very like I said that humid environment helps a lot. Some snakes will soak in their water dishes to help get things moving. In fact, I tell people who have pet snakes who are having a hard time getting their shed off to take a warm washcloth and to kind of let their snake pass through it a few times to kind of help get those those little pieces of that shed going so that way they can happily get out of that old skin. Um, but people seem to think that the shed is the easiest way to measure how big your snake is. So of course, if people find a large shed in their attic, they're probably freaking out a little bit because, oh my gosh, there's a huge snake in there. First of all, especially here in Ohio and various parts of North America, rat snakes are a pretty common um, snake that we find in our houses, um, attics, basements, whatnot, this time of year. Um, they're fantastic climbers. They kind of get into places that you're like, how did they even get there? And they, on average, can be about five feet long, which sounds huge, but realistically, that's not that big when we're talking about snakes. I mean, if I spread him all the way out, he's almost four feet, which, you know, he's pretty wrapped up around me. It doesn't look that bad, but he's a pretty good sized dude, but, you know, he doesn't look that scary, I would think. So, but in order to get that skin off, they have to kind of stretch out the old skin. So yeah, it's huge, but it's not really an accurate depiction of how big that snake really is. I think the measurement is it gets like a third longer than the actual snake itself. So I usually get out one of my small snakes for this so you can actually see the difference, but I can pull out, I'll tell you what, I will pull out the shed I just had for my black milk snake, Voodoo. And he's still a baby. So this is actually his second shed with me. The first one I think got stuck too. He's got a bad habit of doing them. Try to piece it together again. He was so kind as to put his face on there. It's hard sometimes to get the face on these because it's such a delicate thing, but you can actually see his little eyeballs on there. <laughs> it's so cute. He's got the roundest little eyeballs ever. So here we go. We're gonna connect the two here. Yeah, I would say that's easily a third longer than he actually is. So he is not that long, guys. <laughs> He's probably, my snake is leaving again. Rebel has other plans today. Actually, the actual length of Voodoo is probably this. That is accurate. That is about how big a Voodoo is. So this extra here 
which came off, it just got caught on something else. Yeah, I'd say that's about a third to almost even a half. So the shed is far from being a accurate measurement of a snake. It just isn't. Um, and, you know, I, so if you find a very large snake shed somewhere, don't freak out. It's just, you know, the snake had to get out of it. It stretched a little bit in the process. That's what they do. And it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and of course, people are always like, well, there's a snake in my house. If it's winter time, it's because they're brumating, which is like hibernating, but for reptiles. And worst problem would probably be the fact that you might have a rat problem that the snake's aware of and you're not quite aware of yet. So um, you never really have a snake problem. It's usually a rodent problem <laughs> that you have to address. So some cool things I wanna address with snake sheds. You can usually tell where the shed came from. I'm trying to see which one I have here. I've got so many of them. So this is kind of cool because you can sometimes see their patterns on them. So with Rebel, he obviously has very obvious spots. That's why I'm using Rebel for this. This is his shed and I know it because you can see his spots on it. How cool is that? What are you doing, sir? He is grabbing his own shed over here. So you can see the spots on him, which I think is super cool. Um, you have really impressive sheds. So this is from no doubt Persephone. Persephone gives me some gorgeous sheds. She's a good sized snake. So her sheds are always a little on the impressive side. And I do like this one though, because um, first of all, it has a face on it. I love it when the faces come off, but you can also see the point of where it left the shed. And they just come on out. They leave the whole thing. This big one here I had out a minute ago is part, when I say part, it's like half of our Brazilian rainbow boas cupids because half of it broke off. Here's the tail end here. But that's, that's a lot of shed guys. <laughs> and these things, like I said, are about a third longer than the snake. And that's not even the full part of the, the shed. And I think it's interesting that his is that light because he is a bright red snake. Um, but his sheds are always very, very deep and his whole body turns blue. It's not just his eyes, his whole body turns that hazy gray blue. So his sheds are quite intense. Oh, let's look at, let's look at Voodoo's. Voodoo is my black milk snake. So he has that striped pattern. Look at the stripes on there, guys. You can actually see his stripes. That's so adorable. And then, Lighter colored snakes have lighter colored sheds. So this one is from Panko, if I remember correctly. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is Panko's. This is Panko's, I think, because he's got a lighter color shed. My snake is leaving again. I have a Dita shed. I don't know where my hog nose shed went. Uh-oh, I lost it. That one was cute because you could actually see her upturn nose on the end of it. This is Dita Shed. I love hers because she even got the bottom jaw, which I rarely get the bottom jaw because it's usually rolled down. But hers is so cool because I actually have the bottom jaw. And again, this is one of Dita's like first sheds. And she is not, she was not that long when I first got her. I also like to show people that, oh, never mind. I see the Hognos one, that sometimes you can find snake sheds in the wild. So these are actual rat snake sheds that I found in the wild. And you can see where there's, they're like pieces. Um, the snake may have had a rough shed. It may have gotten caught on a lot of stuff because you know they're out in the wild. There's a, a whole lot to get snagged on there for certain. I think this is my, yeah, this is because it's covered in dirt. Ivy loves playing in the dirt. So here is my hog noses shed. You can see how dirty it is, even though she's a light colored snake and kind of hard to tell, that's her lower jaw there. She is actually one of the talented ones also who did get a lower jaw there. But you can kind of see the upturned nose there. It's kind of hard to see, um, but it is there. You can kind of see that little tiny nose piece right there, or that little scale that, that goes looking for things. Rebel is not being helpful today at all. He's a good model, but some days he's like, I'm doing what I want, woman, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, I think those are some of my more impressive pieces. I like to show people different kinds of sheds just because it's not one shed for all. 
Oh, this is this is an ivy one as well. This one's a better one. You can actually see her little nose on there. <laughs> it's adorable. Um, so yeah, I like to show people, you know, lighter snakes are gonna have lighter colored sheds. Darker shades, snakes are gonna have darker sheds. Um, like I said, you know, these are from black rat snakes out in the wild. They are clearly a darker shed. Um, snakes with patterning on them are gonna have patterns that come through on the sheds. I had one here a minute ago and it seems to have gone elsewhere. I don't know where it ran off to. That actually, oh, here it is. That has some light patterning on it. This is from, I don't even know which snake this is from. I have too many snakes, guys. But you can see some light patterning on there. My guess is that's probably from somebody like Nilla. That would be my guess. But it's kind of cool. You have just a wide variety. There's so much you can see in a shed. And I know that some people like to get them and put them under microscopes to kind of look at them and see the differences in the scales and all that fun stuff. So it's really kind of cool to look at. Um, do you bear in mind that in a lot of these cases, the shed is actually reversed inside out. Again, it's kind of like they're pulling their foot out of a sock or a stocking. It's kind of a good way. Sometimes snakes are good about rolling it down, but a lot of times snakes kind of reverse them out. So it might be backwards when you get in. So kind of a fun thing to learn about. Hopefully you learn some fun facts for sure. You know, somebody is like, wow, that's a huge shed. That's from an enormous snake. You can be like, no, let me tell you. <laughs> it's a third longer than it actually is. And hopefully that'll settle some people down, but it's kind of a cool thing. Now, something I recently discovered, I don't know why I didn't figure this out because you can buy almost anything on the internet. So I should have known better, but I was on Etsy looking for something and I saw that they, some people were selling snake sheds for like five bucks each. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I have so many of those. <laughs> so if you see me selling snake sheds on Etsy, you know what happened. Um, Cause I do, I have an entire couch here just full of sheds as I was going through them trying to find really good ones for you guys. Um, but yeah, apparently it's not unusual for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and um, groups, different groups and students and stuff like that to go out and buy snake sheds. And apparently, and I know it should know this, my daughter makes jewelry that you can use them for different kinds of jewelry. Um, some people use them for nail art and things like that. So there's lots of fun things that snake sheds can be used for, um, for sure. So um, that's kind of a fun thing. If you want to get your own shed, you can apparently buy them on Etsy. So, and I might be selling them soon <laughs> because I have so many of them and I don't know what to do with all of them. So I don't really need all of these around here, but some of them are really nice and I don't want to throw them away. So you guys work so hard on making them for me. But as I said, baby snakes make more sheds. Older snakes don't make them as often. Um, and the whole shed cycle takes, it depends on the snake. My hoggy goes through a shed cycle in like two days and she's done. Whereas Cupid, it feels like he takes two weeks. Um, the black milk snake, I felt like his shed cycle took two weeks. And snakes can be very, I'll tell you this right now. And that's why I always tell people, if you see a, shed, a snake in a shed cycle, you don't wanna really go messing with them much. That's why I don't mess with a lot of my snakes in their shed cycles. Um, I do have some snakes that are okay whenever they are in a shed cycle and I can totally handle them and they're perfectly fine, but not all of them are. Like I said, the Brazilian rainbow boa is an, a force to be reckoned with when he is in a shed cycle. But I also know that he goes through very deep sheds. He always has been like that. And um, so he does get very cranky very easily, but snakes can't see very well in certain phases of the shed cycle. So they're very kind of Ah, a lot of them won't eat during a shed cycle and they get easily stressed out during a shed cycle. So actually we usually tell new snake owners, don't feed your snakes when they're in a shed cycle because it can easily stress them out. And in some cases, well, you'll be right wasting a rat because there are some snakes that just absolutely will not eat during a shed cycle. Panko, I went to go feed him last week and he was on the tail end of a shed cycle and he was taking his shed off. So he was pretty well almost done, but he was like, nope, not eating not going to happen. So I had to feed it to somebody else. The one benefit of having 15 snakes is I rarely waste food. So that's, <laughs> if somebody doesn't eat it, somebody else will. Um, and 
you know, we don't mess with them too much because it can sometimes be a little hurty for them, especially if they're going through a very deep shed cycle. They don't want to be messed with. They're feeling a little, you know, they don't feel the best when they're doing it. They feel great when they're done and their colors are gorgeous as soon as they're at the shed cycle. And, you know, you just kind of got to be patient and wait it out. I know it's hard, especially if you just got a brand new snake and they started a shed cycle and you're like, I want to do so much stuff with them. But I really, really beg you, just kind of let them be. They don't go through them very often. Let them kind of go through the, the whole process. Definitely, 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 especially if they're a humid um, environment snake, this is the time to break out the misting bottle every so often and just give them a nice little mist every single day. Um, obviously desert snakes, you're not gonna necessarily do that. In some cases with various species, you may need to build a humid hide for them using some sphagnum moss and maybe like a little plastic hide or box or something like that. Just kind of soak your moss, squeeze the excess out, put it in there and then that way they have some place to get all humid in and make sure that they can get that shed off in one piece so that they won't have stuck shed. What do you do about stuck shed? Probably should talk about that. It happens, it happens a lot. Um, so I've had it happen to me before. Persephone used to have really, um, really bad shed cycles because I used to keep her in a glass terrarium. Glass terrariums are not really good for ball pythons. They're just not. They do much better in a PVC or a plastic enclosure. They just really need a very high humidity environment to be able to snake effectively. So um, she had, oh, we had a lot of humidity issues when I first got her and, you know, it's 10 years later and I've got this all figured out. But back then I was learning as we all do. And she had retained shed on her eyes. So the eyes of a snake are actually a scale. He does not like me touching his head. He is the worst snake for this. Um, so that is a single scale covering his eye there. And that's called the eye cap. Just like whenever I showed you the shed a minute ago, I was able to show you the solid face on the snake. There's your eye cap that came off in that shed. So when they do have a rough shed, sometimes they retain the eye cap and it just stays on there. If you have too many retained eye caps, you may have to go seek veterinary assistance to have it removed. There are little tips on the internet that tell you to take tape and yank it. Do not do that. Never, ever, ever put tape on your snake. It can cause damage. You don't want to cause damage and you can cause your snake to go blind if you do not know what you're doing. Your best bet is to go see a vet. Sometimes they'll give you some special drops or some special, um, we used an ointment on Persephone and you just rub the ointment on there and eventually it softens everything up and on her next shed cycle, all the eye, uh, eye caps came off. The worst ones, well, eye caps are pretty bad, but the worst one is sometimes a snake gets excess shed built up at the end of the tail. If too much is put at the end of the tail and it goes untreated, sometimes it can cause the end of that tail to fall off. I don't know how common that is. I've never actually had that happen, um, obviously. Um, but if you ever have a case where you're having chronic rough sheds and retain sheds throughout your snake, definitely, definitely, definitely go see a vet to see if there's something you can do. And you definitely need to reassess your um, husbandry on your snakes. Something you will notice with a lot of these videos is I'm gonna ask you to reassess your husbandry a lot. Um, I've been cruising the social media reptile boards for a long time. And almost every time someone comes on with a problem, the first thing all of the uh, well-seasoned keepers, um, we will tell you is you need to go back to square one with your husbandry and look at it as if you're a brand new person and you're checking everything as if you are setting it up for the first time ever, just because it usually just comes down to husbandry guys. And one of the coolest things though about sheds um, is that if your snake does have an injury of any kind, um, it's amazing how they just like kind of can get better through different through multiple sheds. Um, Kismet had a really bad injury on his back one time. He got stuck in an earring. Reasons I don't wear earrings they can ever go through ever again. Uh, did not think he would do it, but and here we are. He did it. And he had an earring stuck on him. I took him to the vet after I got the earring off him. And of course he got treated with antibiotics and all that stuff. And he was perfectly fine. It was more of a superficial injury, but 
after um, treatment, he had about two or three shed cycles and you can't even tell he had anything wrong with him now. Um, of course that was years ago, but his, he looks perfectly fine. He looks normal. There's nothing wrong with him. So it's amazing to see what shed cycles do as far as making, you know, fixing issues with the snake. Now, obviously there are some injuries that shed cycles can't even touch, um, but we'll, we'll address those as we get through things here. So hopefully this was informative for you and you learned some new fun facts about shed cycles. If you have other questions about shed cycles or snake sheds in general, please feel free to drop it below. I'm always happy to answer questions and I hope, hope you learned something fun today. So thank you so much and I look forward to our next video together. Thanks.